Bob Alvarez, you've come out with a new report. What are your main findings? Well, uh, my report dealt with the vulnerabilities and hazards of stored spent fuel in, at uh, U.S. reactors in the United States. Uh, the United States uh, shares uh, similar designs, uh, reactor designs, as, uh, as the Japanese reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi Station. Uh, and if you watch the accident unfold at, at the Daiichi Station, uh, the explosions basically showed you that the spent fuel pools uh, were exposed to the open sky. Uh, we are, in the United States are currently storing on the order of three to four, five times more radioactivity in our pools than in uh, Japan, and that the amount of radioactivity that we are storing in unsafe, vulnerable pools constitutes the largest concentrations of radioactivity on the planet. Uh, in 2008, my colleagues and I uh, issued a, a report, an in-depth study, uh, following the 9-11 attacks. We became very concerned about the vulnerability of these pools after those attacks, and we pointed out that if somebody or something were to cause the pool water to drain, uh, it would lead to a catastrophic radiological fire that could render an area uninhabitable far greater than that created by Chernobyl. Chernobyl created an area that's currently uh, uninhabitable uh, uh, that's approximately the size of half of the state of New Jersey. Uh, the fact of the matter is is that uh, we, we don't have a final resting place for these wastes. We've been trying to find a disposal site for these wastes for the last 55 years. And the reality is that these wastes are going to continue to accumulate at U.S. sites. And the reactor operators are going to continue to squeeze uh, uh, spent fuel into pools that have no nowhere near the level of protection of reactors. I mean, these pools are contained in structures that you would find at car dealers ships or big box stores. And um, for example, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission does not require the pools to have backup diesel generators if they lose off-site power. Uh, it's very important to keep the, the pools cool uh, and uh, they, they do pose some very, very serious risks. They are, in my opinion, the most serious vulnerability of nuclear power that we have in the United States. And but what are the alternatives? Uh, given the fact, obviously, that, that the United States government, like uh, uh, several other governments around the world, are determined to continue uh, to expand the use of nuclear power, what are the alternatives for storing the spent fuel? Well, I, I think that the there are different. There's a big difference between plans and reality. I think that the expansion of nuclear power in this country, if it occurs at all, is going to be rather modest and minor. We have to be concerned about the 104 reactors that are operating, uh, and the the generation of that material, and that we should be doing what Germany did 25 years ago, which is to thin out the pools, use them for the original purpose. That they were intended, which is to uh, allow the spent fuel to cool off for several years, and then to place the the spent fuel into dry, hardened storage modules, uh, and uh, this significantly reduces the hazards uh, of these spent fuel pools. You say that what is recommended for expansion in the United States is relatively minor, Bob Alvarez. Um, but I think many were shocked that uh, President Obama has been pushing for something that presidents haven't pushed for for decades. I mean, the last nuclear power plant in this country built, what, some 30, 40 years ago. I mean, one, you've written about uh, President Obama before he was president getting a good deal of support from the nuclear industry. And he never said he wasn't going to push for this, but they've been rather quiet about it right now since the catastrophe in Japan? Well, I think a lot of this is rhetorical. 
I think that uh, I, I look at it as the equivalent of throwing nuclear candy at political supporters or uh, or, or even political enemies who you're trying to win over. Uh, the fact of the matter is is that nuclear power is not going to have a chance in this country at all unless it has unfettered access to the United States Treasury. Uh, this is not going to happen. Uh, the House, for example, recently enacted the appropriations legislation for fiscal year 2012 and totally spurned Obama's request to expand loan guarantee authority. In other words, the U.S. government would guarantee the loans, but the loans themselves would come out of the U.S. Treasury. Uh, I don't think that the Congress right now has the stomach to uh, open up the Treasury for reactors that are going to cost on the order of $10 billion apiece. You also have to keep in mind that while he has been vocally supportive of nuclear power and has done things like try to seek expanded loan guarantee authority, he's also pulled the rug out from under the nuclear industry by canceling the Yucca Mountain disposal site. Uh, and so um, I think that we have to sort out, uh, as we do with a lot of things the president does, uh, the, the difference between what he says and what happens.